Welcome back to our channel, fellow Canadians. I'm your host, Daniel, and today we're diving into some incredibly exciting news about the Canada Pension Plan that could mean a significant boost to your monthly income. We're talking about a potential increase that could see some recipients receiving up to $2,800 monthly. In this comprehensive guide, we'll explore the exact dates, bonuses, and crucial details about who qualifies for this massive boost in CPPP payments. If you're new to our channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. We're committed to bringing you the most up-to-date and accurate information on Canadian benefits, and you won't want to miss our future updates. For our loyal subscribers, thank you for your continued support. Your engagement helps us reach more Canadians who can benefit from this vital information. Let's start with the basics of this CPP increase. The maximum CPP retirement pension is set to increase substantially, with some recipients potentially seeing their benefits rise to up to $2,800 monthly. This change is particularly significant for low-income seniors, who stand to benefit the most. Several factors are driving this increase. First, there are the regular cost-of-living adjustments that the government makes to keep CPP payments in line with inflation ensuring that the purchasing power of your pension doesn't erode over time. Second, we're seeing the impact of the enhanced CPP program which began in 2019 and is now starting to have a more noticeable effect on payment amounts. Lastly, this increase reflects the government's recognition of the financial challenges faced by many seniors, especially in light of recent economic difficulties. It's important to note that while we're highlighting the maximum potential increase to $2,800 monthly, not everyone will receive this amount. The actual increase you'll see depends on various factors, which we'll explore in detail. If you're excited about this increase, give this video a thumbs up. It helps more Canadians discover this important information. Now, let's break down who exactly qualifies for this CPP payment increase. To be eligible, you must meet several criteria. First, there's an age requirement you must be at least 60 years old, which is the earliest age you can start receiving CPP retirement pension. However, it's worth remembering that starting your pension earlier means you'll receive a lower monthly amount compared to if you wait until 65 or later. Second, you must have made valid contributions to the CPP during your working years. The amount you receive depends on how much and for how long you contributed. If you're already receiving CP payments, you'll automatically be considered for the increase. If you haven't applied for CPP yet, you'll need to submit an application to start receiving benefits. While the increase applies to all CPP recipients, low-income seniors will see the biggest boost. This is part of the government's effort to provide more support to those who need it most. Lastly, you must be a resident of Canada. If you're living abroad, different rules may apply and you should contact Service Canada for specific information. It's worth noting that even if you don't meet all these criteria, you may still be eligible for other forms of support, which we'll touch on later in this guide. Take a moment to consider if you or someone you know might meet these criteria. Feel free to share your thoughts or experiences with CPP in the comments below. To fully grasp how this increase will affect you, it's essential to understand how CPP contributions work. Your contributory period begins when you turn 18 or in 1966, when the CPP started, whichever is later, and ends when you start receiving your CPP retirement pension, turn 70 or pass away. If you're employed, you and your employer each pay 5.95% of your earnings into CPP as of 2024. If you're self-employed, you pay both portions, totaling 11.9%. These rates have increased gradually since 2019 as part of the enhanced CPP program. You contribute to CPP upon your earnings between a minimum and maximum amount. For 2024, the minimum is $3,500 and the maximum is $68,500. These amounts are adjusted annually. The CPP also allows for certain low earning periods to be dropped from the calculation of your benefits. This includes the general dropout provision, which automatically excludes 17% of your lowest earning months. There are also dropout periods for child rearing and disability. Understanding these elements helps explain why CPP payment amounts can vary significantly from person to person. Your specific payment increase will depend on your unique contribution history. Now, let's talk about the crucial dates you need to know regarding this CPP payment increase. July 29, 2024 is when the first increase payments will begin. If you're already receiving CPP, you should see the increase reflected in this payment. This means your July 29th payment will include a small retroactive amount for the earlier part of July. It's important to remember that CPP payments are indexed to inflation annually, with the next adjustment after this increase occurring on January 1st, 2025. 
Additionally, the enhanced CPP program is being phased in over several years, which means you may see further increases in future years as the program fully matures. It's crucial to mark these dates in your calendar and keep an eye on your bank account or mailed checks to ensure you receive the correct amount. Why not set a reminder on your phone or calendar for July 29, 2024 to check your CPPP payment? Let us know in the comments if you plan to do this. In addition to the primary CPP payment increase, there are several bonuses and forms of additional support that you should be aware of. The government is introducing a one-time payment for CPP recipients facing financial hardship. This is separate from the general increase and is targeted at those most in need. Eligibility criteria and payment amounts will be announced closer to the implementation date. For low-income seniors who receive the Guaranteed Income Supplement GIs, in addition to their CPP, there will be an increase to GIs payments as well. This increase is designed to ensure that the CPP boost doesn't inadvertently reduce GIs eligibility. Some provinces offer additional top-ups to federal pension payments, so it's worth checking with your provincial government to see if you qualify for any extra support. It's important to note that CPP payments are taxable income. However, the increase in payments is designed to provide a net benefit, even after accounting for potential changes in your tax situation. If you're receiving CPP survivor benefits or caregiver benefits, these may also see an increase, though the exact details will depend on your specific situation. Remember, while these bonuses and additional support measures can provide significant help, they often require proactive steps on your part to ensure you're receiving everything you're entitled to. Which of these additional support measures interests you most? Share your thoughts in the comments. Now that you're aware of the upcoming changes, what steps should you take to make sure you receive your CPP payment increase? For current CPP recipients, most will receive the increase automatically. However, it's crucial to ensure your information with Service Canada is up to date. This includes your address, banking details for direct deposit, and any changes in your personal situation. If you're eligible but haven't applied for CPPP yet, now's the time to do so. You can apply online through my Service Canada account or by mail. Start your application process well in advance of when you want to begin receiving payments. Each year, you receive a CPP Statement of Contributions. Review this carefully to ensure all your contributions are correctly recorded. If you're approaching 60 and haven't started CPPP yet, Carefully consider when to begin. Starting earlier means smaller payments but for a longer period, while delaying can increase your monthly amount but means fewer years of receiving benefits. Consider consulting with a financial advisor or retirement specialist who can help you optimize your CPP strategy in the context of your overall retirement plan. Lastly, stay informed by keeping an eye on official government announcements for any updates or changes, and subscribe to our channel for regular updates on CPP and other Canadian benefits. Taking these proactive steps will help ensure you receive the full increase you're entitled to and can make the most of your CPP benefits. If you found this information helpful, please give this video a thumbs up and share it with friends and family who might benefit. Your support helps us reach more Canadians with this crucial information. The CPP payment increase will affect different age groups in various ways. For those aged 60 to 60 to 64, if you've started taking CPP early, you'll see an increase but it will be less than if you had waited until 65. You have the option to continue working and contributing to CPP, potentially increasing your future benefits. For those 65 to 69, this is often considered the standard retirement age range. You'll likely see the full impact of the increase if you've been contributing for most of your working life. You can choose to delay starting CPP even further, up to age 70 for increased monthly payments. For those 70 and older, if you're already receiving CPP, you'll see the increase automatically. Remember, 70 is the latest you can start CPP, and you can no longer contribute after this age. For those under 60, while you won't receive the increase immediately, this change affects your future CPP outlook. Consider how this might impact your retirement planning and saving strategies. Understanding how the increase affects your age group can help you make informed decisions about your retirement planning and CPP strategy. Which age group do you fall into? Share in the comments how this increase might affect your retirement plans. It's important to address how this increase might affect those receiving CPP disability benefits. When you turn 65, CPP disability benefits automatically convert to CPP retirement pension, and the increase will apply to your converted retirement pension. CPP disability benefits are calculated differently from retirement benefits. The flat rate portion of the disability benefit will see an increase, 
while the earnings-related portion will be adjusted based on the new calculation for retirement benefits. If you're receiving the post-retirement disability benefit for those who started CPP retirement pension and then became disabled, this will also see an adjustment. Additionally, if you have dependent children and receive children's benefits as part of your CPP disability, these may also see an increase. If you're currently receiving CPP disability benefits, it's crucial to understand how these changes will affect your specific situation. Don't hesitate to contact Service Canada for personalized information. For Canadians living abroad or those who have worked in other countries, there are some important international considerations. If you're a Canadian citizen or permanent resident, you can generally receive CPPP payments while living in another country. The increase will apply to your payments, but be aware of any tax implications in your country of residence. Canada has social security agreements with many countries, which can help you qualify for CPP if you've worked in multiple countries. The increase may affect how your benefits are calculated under these agreements. If you're receiving your CPP in a foreign currency, the actual amount you receive will also depend on exchange rates. Consider how currency fluctuations might impact the value of your increased payments. If you're a non-resident thinking of returning to Canada, consider how this increase might affect your decision. Remember to update Service Canada with any changes to your residency status. If you have any international aspects to your CPP situation, it's advisable to seek guidance from both Service Canada and international tax experts to fully understand your position. Are you or someone you know receiving CPP payments while living abroad? Share your experience in the comments. Now, let's address some of the most common questions we've been receiving about this CPP payment increase. Many people wonder if this will affect their other benefits. Generally, the increase is designed not to negatively impact other benefits. However, as CPP is considered taxable income, it could potentially affect income-tested benefits. Always check with Service Canada for your specific situation. Another common question is whether this is a permanent increase. Yes, this is not a temporary measure. The increase is part of the ongoing enhancement of the CPP system. Some people who are already receiving the maximum CPP wonder if they'll see an increase. Even if you're receiving the maximum, you may still see an increase due to the overall enhancement of the CPP system and annual cost of living adjustments. People often ask how this affects the CPP contribution rates for current workers. The contribution rates for current workers have been gradually increasing as part of the enhanced CPP program. This increase in payments is part of the benefit of these higher contribution rates. If you start your CPP after July 2024, you can still receive the increased amount. The increase will be incorporated into the calculation of benefits for all new CPP recipients going forward. For those receiving a CPP survivor's pension, this will also see an increase, as it's based on the deceased contributor's CPP retirement pension. The exact amount will depend on various factors. Lastly, for Quebec residents wondering about the Quebec Pension Plan QPP, while it's separate from the CPP, it generally mirrors major changes. Quebec residents should check with Retrade Quebec for specific information about QPP increases. Remember, while these answers cover common scenarios, your individual situation may vary. Don't hesitate to seek personalized advice from Service Canada or a financial professional. Do you have any other questions about the CPP increase? Leave them in the comments and we'll try to address them in future videos. With this significant increase on the horizon, it's a great time to review and adjust your financial plans. Here are some tips to help you make the most of the CPP boost. First, reassess your budget. Factor in the potential increase when planning your future income and consider how this might change your spending or saving habits. Review your retirement plan as well. If you're not yet retired, consider how this increase might affect your retirement timeline. For those already retired, think about how you might use the extra income. If you have outstanding debts, consider using some of the increase to pay them down faster. With potentially more income, you might have more opportunity to invest. Consider speaking with a financial advisor about how to optimize your investment strategy. Remember that CPP income is taxable so consider how the increase might affect your tax bracket and overall tax strategy. If you don't have an emergency fund, consider using some of the increase to start one. Financial experts often recommend having three to six months of expenses saved for unexpected situations. The impact of this CPP payment increase extends beyond individual recipients. It has the potential to significantly affect the Canadian economy as a whole. With more money in the pockets of seniors, we could see increased consumer spending, particularly in sectors that cater to older demographics. 
This could include healthcare services, leisure activities, and home improvement industries. Local businesses and communities with large retiree populations might experience a noticeable uptick in sales. However, it's important to consider that some seniors might choose to save or invest this additional income rather than spend it, which could have different economic implications. From a societal perspective, this increase could help address the growing concern of senior poverty in Canada. As the cost of living continues to rise, many seniors have found themselves struggling to make ends meet, even with their CPP and other retirement savings. This boost could provide a much-needed buffer, allowing more seniors to maintain a decent standard of living in their retirement years. It might also reduce the burden on other social assistance programs and family members who often step in to support elderly relatives facing financial difficulties. However, it's crucial to consider the long-term sustainability of such increases. The CPP is designed to be self-sustaining, funded by the contributions of workers and their employers. As the Canadian population ages and the ratio of workers to retirees decreases, there may be challenges in maintaining such generous benefits in the future. It's a delicate balance between providing adequate support for current retirees and ensuring the system remains viable for future generations. This increase also highlights the importance of financial literacy and retirement planning. While the CPP provides a foundation, it's not designed to be the sole source of retirement income for most Canadians. This increase serves as a reminder for younger workers to take an active role in planning for their retirement, whether through employer-sponsored pension plans, personal savings, or investment strategies. Let's also consider how this increase might affect different regions of Canada. The cost of living varies significantly across the country, from expensive urban centers like Vancouver and Toronto to more affordable rural areas. While the CPP increase is uniform across Canada, its impact will be felt differently depending on where recipients live. In high-cost areas, the increase might barely keep pace with rising expenses, while in lower-cost regions, it could provide a more substantial boost to quality of life. Another aspect to consider is how this increase might influence retirement decisions. Some individuals nearing retirement age might choose to start their CPP earlier, knowing that the payments will be more substantial. Others might be encouraged to delay starting their CPP even longer, up to age 70, to maximize their monthly benefits. This could have implications for workforce participation among older Canadians and potentially affect labor market dynamics. It's also worth exploring how this CPP increase fits into the broader context of retirement income in Canada. The retirement income system in Canada is often described as a three-pillar system government-sponsored programs like CPP and Old Age Security OAAs, employer-sponsored pension plans, and individual savings like RSPs and TFSAs. This significant boost to the CPP strengthens the first pillar, but it doesn't negate the importance of the other two. In fact, it might encourage a re-evaluation of how these three pillars work together to provide comprehensive retirement security. For those still in the workforce, this CPPP increase serves as a reminder of the value of making CPP contributions throughout one's career. It underscores the importance of maintaining consistent employment and reporting all eligible income to maximize future benefits. It might also spark conversations about the gig economy and how workers in non-traditional employment arrangements can ensure they're contributing adequately to their future retirement income. Let's also consider the impact on interprovincial migration. Canada has seen trends of retirees moving from more expensive provinces to more affordable ones to stretch their retirement income further. With this CPP increase, we might see shifts in these patterns. Some seniors might find they can now afford to stay in their home provinces, while others might use the extra income to fund a move to a desired retirement location. From a policy perspective, this CPP increase could influence future discussions about retirement age and workforce participation of older Canadians. As life expectancies increase and the nature of work evolves, there's ongoing debate about the appropriate age for retirement and how to support those who wish to continue working in some capacity beyond the traditional retirement age. This CPP boost might factor into these discussions, potentially influencing policy decisions about flexible retirement options or incentives for delayed retirement. It's also important to consider how this CPP increase interacts with other forms of retirement income and benefits. For example, while the increase is designed not to negatively impact GI's benefits, it could affect eligibility for other income-tested programs or benefits at both the federal and provincial levels. Seniors will need to carefully consider their overall income picture and how this increase fits into it. The technology aspect of this CPP increase is also worth noting. 
With the rise of digital banking and online government services, most recipients will see this increase reflected automatically in their bank accounts or on their CPP 